Good day to you, brother, and you are welcome to today's Open Level Review. Today is uh, Monday, 16th of August, year 2021. Brother, the year is going to an end, and I'm praying to the Lord of God of hosts who has brought you thus far. The grace for you to finish and to finish is on a better note, and all of us, it will give unto us in Jesus' name. Please, let's pray. So, God of heaven, we thank you for another time to consider your word, and we thank you for the blessing you have released upon us, even from the just concluded convention. We pray that your name will be praised. As we look at your word, we pray that you will speak to us. Let your word be impactful. Let it bring light to our situation. Please help us to represent you everywhere, even indeed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we shall be considering a topic that it says that says, who do you represent? Who do you represent? That is a question. Every man represents someone. The question is, who do you represent? We are going to be reading our memory verse from the book of 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. And thereafter we we'll move to our Bible passage. But can we start from the Bible memory verse? First Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This place is saying that you have passed through recruitment and selection of the Father. So God has chosen you. He chose you for a purpose. For you to understand this scripture, you may have to go back to what happened in the book of Genesis. When God created man, he created them in his own image so that he can be his ambassador. Having created everything, nothing looks like the Father. So he needs to create man. So he created you and I in his image so that we can represent him. Do what the Father will have done. Oversee what we will have over. I mean, what we will have done. You know, be where we will have been. So these are the things. So he created us in his image. And thereby, Adam and Eve came forth. They were doing their thing, supervising the works that the father had done. But when sin came, they were no longer representing God. This tells you that a man can either represent God of heaven, the light, or represent the devil, the darkness. According to the scripture, you cannot serve two masters. So it's either you are representing God or you are representing the devil. It's either you have light or of darkness. It's either you have liberty or of bondage. So you decide which one you want to be. But God is saying in that book of 1 Peter 2, 9, to his own children that I have chosen you. Don't forget the book of John chapter 15, verse 16. Jesus said, I have chosen you, you have not chosen me, that he may go forth and be a fruit. So when we appear, not on our own accord, but they are the accord of the Father who has called us. So I have chosen you. He chose us, so we are to be his representative. What has he chosen us to be? He said, as a royal priesthood, as a holy nation, a royal priesthood, a kinghood, not someone, I mean, just any other person, a holy nation, a nation without death, without blemish, without stain, a peculiar people. And when God says he is choosing, it means there are several alternatives, but you just have to choose one. So you are not by mistake found in the hand of the Father. You are a representative that you should show forth his praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So God has chosen you to be his ambassador. Now here is the question. Are you actually representing him? Everybody can say God chose me to be his ambassador. But God knows those who are his. So are you actually representing the father in your attitude, in your mannerism, in your character, in the way you do in your office, in the church of God, in the society? Can people really say you are a believer? When they saw the Christian in the Antioch, the disciple, they called them Christian because when they look at their life, they could see Jesus in them. Can we truly say you are an ambassador of Christ? Not what we say by mouth, but what we do, what we act, how we go about things. 
will make people to conclude who we are. Can we read our Bible text? 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 18 through, uh, through 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 18 through 21. Look at what the Bible says. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus, Jesus Christ, and has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and had committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors of Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Glory be to God. Now look at the word of God. Starting from that verse 8, All things, including you and I, we are of God. Both living and not living, we are of God. We are of God. We are of God. And God has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. What this place is saying is that, taking you back to where I started from the book of Genesis, when we lost it, there is need for redemption. Every other alternative has been made use of blood, blood, blood of dough, blood of goat, of animal, but they weren't taking the sin of man away, but rather they were actually not removing the sin. So the stain is still there. So every year things have to be done, but the stain was not still removed. But someone who knew no sin have to come. How will you say the blood of animal will redeem a man? Their value is not of the same. The value of man surpasses everything. But there is an higher value, or a higher value rather, that is required. And that is the blood of the Lamb. That is the blood of Jesus that has been given to us as a propitiation for our sin. And you know what happened? He came, he died to reconcile us. Having lost the ambassadorship, he reconciled us so that we can come back and gain what we have lost. And we can come back to the position of us representing the Father. And he has given unto us ministry of reconciliation. You know what that one means? We have been reconciled to be with the Father. We are his ambassador. I am now being given the same assignment of reconciling others back to Christ. When I'm sent from Nigeria to, uh, uh, to Afghanistan, to Israel, to any of the country, to go and represent Nigeria, whose will will I do? It's not the will of the Israel. It's not the will of the country where I'm sent to, but the will of the person who sent me there. I may be in the midst of the sinner, but I'm still ambassador of Christ. I may be in the midst of the people who does not know God in my place of work, I remain the ambassador of Christ. I may be in the midst of people whose ways are not in accordance to God, I remain the ambassador of Christ. And my ministry is to ensure that I reconcile them back to God. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not in putting their trespasses unto them, and has committed unto us the word of reconciliation. That is what we are to do. As an ambassador of Christ, we reconcile people back to God. And he now said in verse 20 that now then, why now then? It is now then, after we have been washed in the blood, after we have been pardoned, after our sin has been taken away, now then we are his ambassador. We cannot say this before, but now we can say it because we have been washed by the blood of the Lamb. So this was done by Christ Jesus. And he said, Paul said, he now beseech us that we should do that. We should reconcile. I mean, because you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. You are to be reconciled to God. You know, for he had made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. Jesus was made to sin for us. He knew no sin. But the major point of today's I mean, open level review is that you are reconciled to be Christ's ambassador. Don't you think something is wrong? If Christ paid price for you to be reconciled and yet you are misrepresenting him. I think one would be a bastard if you are to represent your country, but instead of you standing defending your nation, you are defending the nation where you have been sent to, is a sign that you don't know why you are there. Actually, that is what many of us are doing today. We tend to dance to the tone of the world and not to the tone of Christ. We tend to do the bidding of the world, not the bidding of the Father. We tend to follow what they wanted, not what God wanted. If you actually is ambassador, whatever instruction you give is what you are going to do. Is what you are going to do. And until you do that, we, you cannot actually care, claim that you are ambassador of Christ. Are you representing God or you are representing the devil? Can I say this one more time? 
every man represents someone. It's either you represent God or you represent the Father. You want to know who you represent? Look at your attitude and place it beside that of Christ. Look at your behavior and place it beside that of Christ. Can we say you have Christ? In that book of 1 Peter 2, 9, you are a holy nation. Remember, you committed sin. You are committing sin. Are you of Christ? You are a royal priesthood. Can we actually say you are a son of a king with the way you are doing, with the way you speak, with the way you act, with where you are being found? So you have to look at all these things and don't forget, God himself is looking at what you are doing. God knows who represent him and devil actually knows those who represent him. You may be in the church and you are still ambassador of the devil. So you have to know who you are representing. Are you representing Christ or you are representing God? If you are not representing God, it's whether you come to Christ today. Paul said, I beseech you, be you reconciled to Christ. This is the hour that you have to be reconciled to Christ so that you can truly, truly represent God. You have to tell him to forgive your sin. He's ready to do that. Now the blood is still potent while you are here. Tell him to pardon you. Tell him to forgive you. And if you are there, you have given your life, but things are not right. Tell him you are sorry you are coming back home because there is mercy of God in the house this morning I mean, this moment and he's ready to pardon your sin. He's ready to bring you back to himself. You just have to represent Christ right. Please pray to him in a moment. Tell him to help you. Tell him to help you. Father, please give me the grace to be your true ambassador at all times in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Lord, we thank you for making us your image. And we are sorry wherever we have misrepresented you. So we are asking for the grace to represent you right. Please give unto us. As many who are there who are making commitment to you today, please forgive them. Have mercy on them. Bring them back to you. Lord, when you shall come, don't let us miss your coming. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Do have a wonderful time.